short video we're going to show you how to install and get started with Gibbon. Just a few essentials to get you up and running as quick as possible. Um, in this installation we'll be using Mac OS X and MAMP as our server stack. Uh, typically in production you might be more likely to use Linux uh, and, and therefore LAMP. Here we are in the document root of our web server, htdocs. I've downloaded version 9.1 which is a current stable version. I'm just going to double click on the zip file to unzip it. Um, you can rename this folder, I'm just going to call it Gibbon to keep it easy. In my browser, I'm going to go to my web server, in this case localhost, and I'm going to go to that Gibbon folder. So here's the installer, there's no config file yet in our system and so it takes us straight to the installer automatically. Um, choose your language and press submit. My database server is on the same machine, so I'm going to say localhost. And the database doesn't exist yet, but I know there isn't one called Gibbon. Um, if it was, it would use that. If there isn't, then it'll just set one up. I'm just going to put in my MySQL database uh, username and password. And down here now, for production, you typically wouldn't want the demo data to be installed into the database, but just for a test, it's interesting to see how a school could be set up. So I'm going to say yes. This step is just going to take a moment as it creates the database, sets up Gibbon structures, and then imports the demo database. All right, so here we are at step three. I'm just going to click into this surname field and press enter, um, and we can see in red now the fields that we have to complete. So I'm just going to fill in my details here. Um, And if you check receive support, you'll get an email from us within 24 hours welcoming you to Gibbon, just giving you an outline uh, and somewhere to touch base. And also, we'll sign you up for our mailing list, which is used for new releases. This password policy here can be configured later on. This is the standard one, but in system settings, you can adjust that. All of this should be filled in automatically. Because I downloaded the stable version of the code, it's automatically set um, cutting edge code or dev code to no. You wouldn't want to change this. If you get the dev code, it should set yes to automatically. Right? If you're an advanced user, you might see that this has gone wrong and reset that. Otherwise, no need. Um, statistics collection, if you don't want to give us anonymous usage data, just change that to no. Which you're going to do now because I don't want to find out about this install later. I'm just going to call it testing, TST, set my currency. Uh, you can apply to us for a value-added license at any time by email. They're free, um, and they give you access to some query builder data, and hopefully we'll add some more features later on. i just specify my country. The primary assessment scale is the most common way my teachers are going to assess progress. Right, now that I've got all of that done, I'm going to press Submit, and here it is. It's installed. I'm still in the installer. This is just a confirmation, so I just go to the home page. And this is what visitors to the site from now on will see. So I'm just going to log in with the username and password, press set up, and here we go, we're into the system. Um, what you're seeing here is my timetable. We're right at the end of the school year, so school is closed on Thursday and Friday. Um, on this side, my class is imaginary students in an imaginary form group and their behavior. Um, this, is, this is a normal view for a teacher. Students are pretty similar, parents are a little bit different. So the installation just took a few minutes. Um, I'll just talk you through some of the structures now that would make up a school. So under system admin, this is where you can update Gibbon, adjust your language settings, check for updates and things like that. Um, but the real meat of how the school is set up is in school admin. And you can see down here, assessment grouping, other people, teaching and learning, years, days and times, different areas. Uh, years, days, and time is probably the best place to start. Gibbon uses a structure where every almost all data is categorized into school years. So users exist, for example, but students exist as an enrolled entity in each school year. So we are currently in 2014-15, um, and you can see the start and end days. That school year then has some terms. And those can be used in a calendar of special days where you might mark down school closures and things like that. Beyond that, 
setting up the basic structure of your school, what days you're open, what days you're closed, things like that. Uh, most schools would then want to start looking at groupings. These are your real um, keys in a school which show how things are organized. So under manage year groups, you'll see we have year 7, 8, 9, 10, and the sequence number orders those so that they always appear in the right order. Um, these are the standards because Gibbon was built at a high school, but you can remove and add your own years as you please. Um, students study in a year group, they're enrolled in a year group, but they will also be associated to a form group, which might be called a role group or a home group or a pastoral care group. Um, here you see in year 7 we have 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, and we have tutors and spaces. Departments can be academic or non-academic, and houses are, are usually for sports competition and the like. There are some other settings here, but really once you've got your years, days, and times, and your grouping set, um, you're starting to have the makings of a school. So let's jump over now into user admin. Uh, Gibbon doesn't have separate storage separate tables for different types of users like some systems have a staff table and a student table and a parent table Gibbon recognizes that some parents will also be teachers um, and that there's a variety of, of mixtures of roles so every user is entered as a user in the system right? and users can have a primary role but users can also have a range of other roles so if we access here this person could be a parent, but they could also be a teacher. When they log in, on the right-hand side, in the sidebar, they'll see the role switcher, and that will allow them to change their hat for that session. Right? But this one up here, the primary role, that will be the default role. You can define more roles here um, as you need. When you define a role, you can also assign it permissions. Right? The system is formed of uh, different modules, so here we see activity which lives up here. Right here we have application form, which lives up here. So what we'll see is each module has a number of different actions, and actions can be turned on or off. Some actions can't be turned on for certain groups. Maybe they're only available for staff, but a lot of the time there's a lot of flexibility, given this trying to be a flexible system. Um, you'll notice here this page has gone into uh, full screen view. If we want to get to what was on the sidebar, we can just use this drop down at the top. So I'm going to go then back to manage users. So maybe you add some roles, you set your permissions. You can use permissions to turn certain things on and off. Maybe you want to do a small initial rollout, so you turn off most of the actions for most people. If someone doesn't have any rights, any actions within a module, the module won't appear in the top menu. So most users, for example, won't see um, the admin entry here. That will be for admin users only. So we've created our users. We might want to list some of these users as staff. We might want to create some parents and start linking, uh, sorry, create some families and start linking parents and students into those families. And really importantly, we're going to want to enroll some students. So here we see um, in alphabetical order all of our 279 currently enrolled students. When students are enrolled, they go into a year group and into a form group. Um, and that, that relationship can be fairly flexible. You can have form groups operate only for students in a year. So in this school, all the kids in 9.3 are in year 9, but you could also have vertical role groups, where a role group contains students from a number of different year groups. You'll notice that um, we can jump between years here. And this enrollment is specific to this particular year. At the end of the year, when we want to bump students up a year group, we'd want to run the rollover to start moving them around. The last thing we're just going to look at here quickly um, in this section are these things. Now, these do import users, families, and student enrollment, uh, but they're more of a sync than an import. In version 11, we're going to add some more options here, but the way these work at the moment, if I synchronize users, if a user is not in the synchronized file, they'll be set as left automatically. So you can't just import some users and then add some more and keep importing them in batches. You need to have them in one import file. 
If you then want to add more, you need to add them to that same import file and import them together. So it's really designed to synchronize Gibbon from another system. Last little bit of admin here, we'll look at timetable admin. This video is probably not in depth enough to, to talk about really creating and managing timetables, but it's useful to know that in Gibbon we have courses and we have classes. So courses would be something like year 10 science, and the classes might be year 10 science class 1, class 2, and class 3. We can set up some academic structures, and even if we don't get around to setting up a timetable, we can still associate people with plan with different classes and courses and use the plan out of the markbook and some other features. The timetable really helps to tie it all together, um, but it, it's pretty in-depth in terms of getting it to work. So maybe look at the forums or email us if you have any timetable-specific questions. Hopefully through this you can see that um, you can get up and running fairly quickly. If you go to our administrator's support area on the website, so it's givenedu.org, and then you go to support and administrators in the top menu, you'll see this getting started guide with Given. This picks up from the installation guide, and what it does is it describes in detail all the things that I've described just now, such as the school structures, users, um, and, and a link to the timetable, etc. So that would be a, a good next place. That pretty much just wraps up this short introduction, which will hopefully let you get given up and running. Um, get in touch if you have any questions beyond that. <laughs>